Hi, everybody. Hello. I hope you're having a good day. I know I am having a good day. You'll notice that uh, we're going to be starting in about 31 seconds. So, uh, let me just do a few checks to make sure everything is working. It sounds like everything's working. That's always good. We'll start in about 18 seconds. I'm pretty excited to do this lesson about the earth. Uh, it's kind of a double lesson. You'll see what I mean when I get started because earth can kind of have two meanings. So, uh, starting in three seconds, two, one. Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson where we're going to talk about the earth. We're going to talk about earth. Notice I used a the and then I didn't use a the. You'll understand why in a moment. Um but this is the fourth in a series of lessons. We did a lesson on air. We did a lesson on water. We did a lesson on fire. Now, we're doing a lesson on the earth. So, I think this will be a fun lesson. Um I don't know if you realize that when I do um the research to make the slides, it's actually fun for me to do that. I think one of the reasons that I became a teacher uh is because I actually enjoy uh learning new things and putting lessons together and then teaching people like you. So, welcome to this English lesson where we're going to talk about the earth. Before we get started, just a few things to note. One is hello to everyone in the chat. I'm not gonna say specific names today but it is good to see Dave and Todd here ready to moderate. So awesome to see you. Should I say some specific names? Sure, let's do it. Hi to Lolly Lolly and Josh Lee and Joy Roy and Eugene from Etobicoke, Julia Olise, Rod and Brent. The English teachers are here. Good to see both of you. Uh Naomi is here. Muhammad is here. I know Mode Eggs is here. I know that Maria C is here. Norma is here. Just scrolling back. Cecilia Romia is here. Tony is here. Good to see Tony. Mode Eggs. I think I might have said your name twice. I should stop greeting people because otherwise this would just be a lesson where Bob the Canadian says hi to everybody. So, anyways, a few things that I did want to mention. Please use the chat for English conversation only. Please don't use the chat to ask questions and certainly don't use the chat to start arguments uh about things that are going on in other parts of the world. I noticed this morning there were a few people who raided the chat Uh, and it just isn't a good thing to do. The chat's a friendly place for you to practice your English. Let's try to keep the chat joyful. Let's keep try and keep the chat um just a fun place for that kind of thing. If you do have a question though during the lesson, there is a link in the description below that you can use and you can ask it using the link that Todd and Dave will share in the chat. But I think maybe we should get this lesson started. What do you think? Let's get this lesson started. So, earth. You'll notice that I have two slides here. I have earth and then I have a picture of someone putting a plant in dirt or soil. So, we refer to the ground as the earth, okay? So, there is earth all around my house. The lawn grows in the earth that is on my property but we also use the word earth to talk about the planet earth. So, just a slightly different meaning for the word. Again, you can talk about earth as basically all of the dirt that you see outside all of the soil but you can also use the word earth to refer to the planet that we all live on. Um so, hopefully, you understand that distinction. We live on earth but there is a lot of earth around my house, okay? So, that's the slight difference. When I talk about earth in the sense of dirt, I mean stuff that looks like this. Dirt is usually brown. Dirt is found in every single country in the world. Dirt is simply what you will find if you look underneath the plants that are growing outside and in some areas, you can just see the dirt. There is a field across the road from me and yesterday, the farmer was in that field and so, it's just a big field of dirt right now. At some point, he will plant something there. So, I'm not sure if you know what this person is doing but they're riding a dirt bike. So, when you have dirt, you can buy a type of motorcycle that's called a dirt bike uh and you can use that uh to uh drive around in the dirt and uh you get a little bit of dirt on you when you do it but I'm sure it's quite fun. 
So, what is the difference between dirt and soil? So, soil is the kind of dirt that you use when you want to grow things, okay? So, if you go to a farm, you could say the field is full of dirt. It's a big field of dirt but you would probably more accurately say soil, okay? So, I said the farmer worked up the dirt. The farmer has the field across from me ready to plant. It would probably be more accurate to say the soil is ready to be planted. Soil is the type of dirt that's really good for growing plants in. It's the type of earth that is just it's just really has a lot of nutrients. It has everything you need for plants to grow. So, soil is simply dirt that's really good for growing stuff. We have a lot of soil on our farm as well. So, the very top layer is called topsoil. You'll notice in this picture that the dirt close to the surface, the soil close to the surface has a darker color to it. That usually means that the soil is very rich in nutrients. You'll notice that when you go lower, this is actually called subsoil but that's a different slide. The soil is a slightly different color but everywhere you go in the world where they grow crops in fields, they'll talk about how much topsoil they have. There are parts of Canada where there is lots of topsoil. And there are parts of Canada where there isn't very much topsoil. The more topsoil you have, the better your crops will grow. Um my farm has an average amount of topsoil. Um we also use the word land to almost always refer to any piece of property that doesn't have buildings on it. Let me explain. Around a town, there will be fields. And we will simply refer to it as land. And sometimes people will say, I'm going to buy a piece of land and build a house. I'm going to buy some land and build a house. And what they mean by that is they're going to buy what you could call a field but it can refer to any piece of property that has no buildings on it, okay? Um so anyways, uh we live on a very large piece of land. So, when you talk about a farm, you can also use the word land. We sometimes call it farmland as well but land is a word we use uh, to refer to any place where there's no buildings um and there's usually something growing there depending on where you live. If you can grow crops on a certain piece of land, we say it is arable. So, the amount of arable land in the world is finite. That means there's only a certain amount of it. So, it's very important that every country takes care of their arable land. You need to take care of the soil, the land, the fields where you can grow stuff. So, if you say some uh if you say, oh, I have a piece of land for sale and someone says and it's arable land, that means that you can grow crops on it. There's a couple kinds of soil. I hope by the way, I hope this lesson isn't too boring. I found it fascinating but it is a very uh a fairly specific topic. So, hopefully you enjoy it. Um I know I always enjoy teaching them but let's keep going. There are a couple different kinds of soil. Actually, more than two but I'm simply going to talk about clay and sand. Clay is actually a very, very fine soil. I know it might seem like sand is very fine but clay is actually a very, very fine soil and it can get muddy very easily and it can hold lots of water when it gets wet. The soil on my farm is mostly clay. Another type of soil is a sandy soil or sand itself. Sand doesn't hold water very well. In fact, water goes through sand very, very quickly. So, a couple of different kinds of soil, clay soil and sandy soil. I didn't add the why there but you can, I think you understand what I mean. And then I mentioned this earlier. This is the top soil. <laughs> And if you go down far enough, you have what's called the subsoil. The topsoil is good for growing stuff. I think I'm covering up my mic. The subsoil is not great for growing stuff. And then if you go deep enough, you get to what's called bedrock. So, in Canada, 
we have bedrock at a certain depth. If you dig far enough into the ground or if you drill far enough, you will hit bedrock. When they build large apartment buildings, they usually drill down so that they can hit bedrock so that the building has a solid foundation. Uh where I live, they often drill down to bedrock because there's water and natural gas available down there. So, bedrock is if you go down far enough that you hit rock. If you've ever played the game Minecraft, I think if you dig far enough down, you hit bedrock. Todd and Dave can uh confirm that for me. I haven't played Minecraft for a long time. Um let me see here where I'm at. Yeah, let's do two more and we'll do some questions. We can also buy soil. So, if you need some earth to plant something in, you can go to the hardware store or almost any store at this time of year and buy a bag of soil and that is a special kind of soil that you use to grow things in pots. So, if you had some pots and you wanted to plant something and you know that things grow in good earth, you would go and buy some potting soil and put it in the potting soil in a pot. And then, of course, when any time it rains, the earth gets muddy. When dirt or soil gets a lot of water added to it, when it rains or when even if you let your garden hose run by accident, you end up getting a lot of mud. Mud is simply dirt or soil or earth that has gotten very, very, very wet. Hey, let's look at a few questions from people. Let me find my question sheet here. Let me do an audio check for a sec. No one has been mentioning anything. So, I'm assuming that it's working really, really well and let's uh let's get to the first question and by the way, the first question is a really, really good one. It's from Vito and Vito says, hi, Bob. Do you prefer to keep your head above water to be on fire, to walk on air or to be down to earth? So, first of all, Vito, thanks for asking that because you're tying all four lessons together. I did a lesson about water, about fire, about air and about earth and then Vito has used uh four little idioms that use each of those elements. So, when you keep your head above water, you do just enough work every day so you don't get behind. That's that's a good explanation. When you're on fire, um you're everything's just going well for you that day. Let's say I had eight things to do today and it was going to take me all day and I was done by by lunchtime, I would say, I'm on fire today. I'm working so fast. When you walk on air, you're just in a good mood because something good happened and when you're down to earth, you're very practical. You're very efficient. You say what you mean usually. So, thanks Vito for that. Very, very cool. S.L. Lenka. By the way, congratulations S.L. Lenka. Mentioned earlier that you got a new job teaching. That is very cool. That was cool to hear that in the chat. Nice work. And here we go. Hi, Bob. Good to see you again. Have you watched the movie called The Core 2003? The film focuses on a team whose mission is to restart the rotation of the earth's core. No, I have not watched that movie. I will add it to my list and see if I can find a way to watch it online. Sounds interesting. I do like science fiction and it sounds a little bit like a science fiction movie. So, that would be fun to watch. Let's see here. Um Tai Ho says, hi, Bob. I have no question. You're so close to 700,000 subscribers. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Tai. I will. Um by the way, as I've mentioned before, I appreciate everyone who has ever clicked that little red subscribe button over there. Thank you for doing it. Uh Murdad says, hi, Bob. Can you tell me what is the difference between ground, dirt, earth or soil? Thanks. So, They are all used to refer to basically dirt. So, you can plant a tree in the ground. You can plant a tree in the earth. You can plant a tree in the dirt. You can plant a tree in the soil. Probably, I would use dirt, soil or ground. Those would be the most common ways but they all refer to that black, brown or yellow, whatever color stuff is outside once you look underneath the plants that are growing. Let's see here. Says here from Muhammad, earth, a famous word for each human. Change the place of letter H in the word earth and put it in the first so you have the best way to describe our home, the earth. So, let me see here. Heart, heart. Yes, there we go. Very nice. 
I figured I figured it out Mohammed. Uh next question is from Yo-Yo. Yo-Yo says, hi teacher Bob. Do you know Elon Musk SpaceX company? So, do you know the Elon Musk SpaceX company? Little fix there. If you can leave the earth, which country do you want to see when you are in space? I would love to just see the whole planet turn one full rotation if I was able to see the earth from space. That would be really cool. Uh Lolly Lolly says, bonjour Bob to work the land to work the earth. Please, which one is better to say? Merci Bob. You could say either. You would probably say the farmer is going to work the land but you could definitely say they're going to work the earth or they're gonna move some earth. Um I think land is the first one's definitely the more common way to say it. Yes, the farmer across the road was able to work the land yesterday. That means he brought in equipment that turned the soil and worked up the soil. Um let's see. <laughs> Natalia, which of these creatures living inside the soil do you respect the most? Mole, earthworm, ant, mouse, marmot, vole, shrew, tick, slug, or beetle? Well, I hate ticks. Ticks I just do not like and I really like earthworms. We'll talk about earthworms in a bit but I would say my favorite would be earthworms. Um let's see here. Luis Mora says, hi, Bob. I just subscribed to your channel. Congratulations. You are an excellent teacher. Keep it up. Well, thanks, Luis. Thank you very much for that. Um let's see here. Sorry, I don't normally read from the chat but I just looked over and it's nice to see cool conversations happening. People saying hi to each other and things like that. Very nice. Um Yaroslav. Hi, teacher Bob. What's the difference between the words earth, soil, ground and by the way, do you use the phrase what on earth? Take care. Yes. We say where on earth did I put my keys? What on earth is happening here? How on earth did you find my keys? So, all of the question phrases, you can put on earth at the end. So, uh it's just a very emphatic way to say something. So, what on earth are you doing? So, let's say someone was digging a hole in the ground and you could say, what on earth are you doing? So, it's just a way of yeah, asking it emphatically. Um and then I think I talked about earth, soil, and ground. They're they're kind of somewhat equivalents of each other. So, um uh let me see. I don't know what the next doesn't the next question sorry didn't doesn't make much sense. Max again, here's the question. I love your videos so much. Could you please tell me what is the difference between earth and ground? Thank you so much. I think ground is a more general term and a more common term. Like you if I was standing if I was in a tree I would climb down to get back to the ground. If I was standing on the ground, I could jump up and down on the ground. So, ground is definitely the more common word and in fact, I don't have a slide for it. I should have done that. Um let's see here. Next question is not uh, by the way, I only answer questions that are related to the topic of the day just so you know. Um Next question is from Natalia. Super teacher Bob. Just our hero teacher around the world. Thanks, Natalia. My question, have you yet planted a tree? Have to add an ed there to celebrate the spring. Salut. I have not. Usually in the spring, Jen and I plant maybe one or two trees but I'll tell you, normally we go to um a spring plant sale or a fundraising auction where they sell plants in the spring but none of that is allowed right now because of COVID. Um so, we haven't actually been anywhere to to buy a tree. So, let's see. Um the next question I'm gonna skip. It's from Katerina and it's about nuclear power generation. Um I'm just gonna skip that Katerina because it's not really related totally to the topic. Okay. So, sorry about that. Um I'm gonna move on to Eugene's question. Eugene says, hi, Bob. I took about one hour of 4K video. Beautiful Toronto landscape this week. I uploaded to my Dropbox. I will send an email Dropbox links to you. You can free to use it. Well, thanks, uh, Eugene. I watch a YouTuber named Maddie Hapoya from Toronto and I'm always impressed by how beautiful it you just go outside the city a little bit um and you can see some real beauty and even some of the city landscape inside. So, I look forward to seeing it. 
Um, Ario. Hola, mister. How are you? My question is, what is Earth Day? Thank you. So, Earth Day is on April 22nd every year and it's a day where people who want the earth to remain beautiful and clean and unpolluted celebrate the earth and uh think of ways that they can make the earth a better place. It's a cool day. Um Cecilia. Hello, Bob. Can you give us some examples using the word earthy? So, Earthy is used to describe colors or smells or even a person that reminds you of the earth and I have a slide with the word earthy that I'll pull up in a bit. I think I do. So, any let's say you paint a room and you use different tones of brown and light yellows um or let's say you're um grinding up certain spices. They might have an earthy smell. They might smell a little bit like dirt. So, that's what earthy would mean. Uh Rachel Hong. Hi, Bob in Korea. May pottery. We make pottery out of clay. Is it the same in Canada? Yes, there are certain types of clay that can be used to make pottery. I think I have that. Maybe I don't. Yeah, I do have that slide coming up. But speaking of slides, let's get back to the slides. Um let's see here. Before I do though, um hi to the 387 people watching. I'm Bob the Canadian. I teach English here on YouTube. If you are new here, you should click that red subscribe button over there and subscribe. I appreciate it if you do. Um it's always good to have more subscribers and that's just more people who I can help practice their English and learn more English. Uh let's see here. We talked about mud. Let me make that a bit smaller. So, again, this is not a scientific lesson. So, please don't uh, get annoyed if I'm wrong but to me, the crust of the earth is the very thin top layer of rock and a little bit of soil, okay? So, the earth has several layers. The top layer that we all live on is called the crust of the earth or the earth's crust. When you have bread, the outside of the slice of bread or the outside of the loaf of bread is called the crust. The earth also has a crust and it's the top most thinnest layer. Let me make this slide bigger so you can see the crust of the earth. So, the top layer of rock and that little bit of dirt we would call the crust. Underneath the crust, you have what's called the mantle. So, the mantle is the part of the earth between the crust and the core which is actually my next slide. So, the core of the earth is the hot center of the earth. So, there's probably more layers than those three, okay? But for the uh, simplicity of this lesson, we have the crust of the earth or the earth's crust, the mantle of the earth or the earth's mantle which is below the crust but above the core and then we have the earth's core or the core of the earth which is the hot center of our planet. I'm going to talk a little bit about earth moving equipment. So, earth moving equipment is the type of equipment that they use to move the earth around before they build things. So, you have all kinds of different equipment that humans have invented to move the earth and it's called earth moving equipment or you might just call them earth movers. So, we have what's called a grater. A grater is a machine that they use. It has a big blade in the center and they use this to kind of smooth out the dirt. When they make um a place, when there's a place where they're going to put up a parking lot, they will often have a grater come in and it will make the, it will move all of the earth that it needs to in order to make things perfectly smooth so that they can build a parking lot. Sometimes we even see graders. We have dirt roads where I live and in the summer, um late spring, early summer, a grader will come to level out the dirt road again because sometimes there's lots of potholes and puddles. We have a machine called a bulldozer. A bulldozer is a tracked vehicle. Instead of wheels, it has tracks and it is a type of earth mover that's used to push dirt around. So, it has a big blade on the front. A bulldozer is a very powerful machine that is used to move dirt simply by pushing it. 
Um and I think because it has tracks, it can push really, really hard because tires would spin really easily but the tracks have better grip. Hey, Thamizini, thank you so much for becoming a member of the channel. That is very awesome of you. Thank you very much for that. Um if you have watched any of my GeoGuessr live streams which I do on my other YouTube channel, we almost always see an excavator somewhere. So, an excavator is a machine with a big arm and bucket that can dig in the dirt. It can dig in the earth to make really deep holes. Um usually when they um are planning to build a house in Canada, an excavator will come uh and will dig a hole with its big arm and big bucket. But yes, when we play GeoGuessr, I think almost every time I've played, I've seen an excavator and taught that vocabulary word. So, this will be review for you. Um I see Garav in the chat saying heavy machinery. We also call this heavy machinery. Thank you for that reminder, okay? Um and then Modag saying excavators here as well. <laughs> yes, they're everywhere. <laughs> I think excavators, it's just a sign of the amount of construction in the world. We are constantly building things. Um and we also have a type of uh earth mover or heavy machinery called a backhoe. Uh, a backhoe is called a backhoe because on the back, it has an arm and a bucket for digging. Um so, th- a hoe in English is a tool you use in the garden and this looks a little bit like uh, that tool. Uh and then lastly, we have what's called a dump truck. So, a dump truck can be filled with dirt. You know, as they're digging a hole in the earth, they can put the dirt into a dump truck. And then the truck can actually dump. The reason it's called a dump truck is because the back can go up and we say that it is dumping. So, it will go and dump its load somewhere. So, to review some of the more common earth moving equipment, a grader for leveling things, a bulldozer for pushing dirt and earth around, an excavator for digging holes, a backhoe for doing both. It's kind of um like a Swiss army knife of earth moving machines. It has a loader on the front and a um a a digger on the back. And then we have a dump truck for moving dirt and earth and stones and gravel and everything around. Um these were some of my favorite vehicles as a child. I would always like seeing them go by on the road. I think a lot of kids like um dump trucks and uh excavators and all those kinds of things. (laughs) <laughs> Brent says, I'd love to do an English lesson from a moving dump truck. That would certainly be a lot of fun. Hey, so we mentioned earthworms earlier. Hey, art game, thank you so much for the super sticker. That is very awesome of you. Thank you. Um earthworms. So, one of the reasons why from that big list that Natalia gave of all the things that live in the soil, one of the reasons I said earthworms were my favorite is because earthworms are a sign that the soil is really, really healthy. It's a sign that the soil is a good place to grow things. So, Jen and I grow flowers as many of you know. When we work up the soil, when we work up the earth, we're always happy to see earthworms because it means that the soil has lots of nutrients in it. It has everything you need for plants to grow well. So, earthworms are my favorite thing to see in the soil. Um we had a question about Earth Day. Earth Day takes place on April 22nd every year uh and it is a day where we celebrate the earth. It's a day where people who um yeah, I would say you might call them earth keepers. Um that's a rare term but someone who really wants to keep the planet healthy um would celebrate Earth Day. Most places in the world whether you are an environmentalist or not, whether you're someone who wants to make the earth better or not, are usually, people are usually aware of Earth Day, a day when we celebrate the planet. So, sometimes the earth shakes and we call it an earthquake. Where I live in Ontario, Canada, we have minor earthquakes very rarely. So, we have an earthquake every seven to ten years and it's very, very minor. On the Richter scale, which is how they measure an earthquake, we're like the lowest possible. The last earthquake we had lasted about two seconds and 
It just felt a little strange. But in some places in the world, they have major earthquakes. Uh earthquakes that are really high on the Richter scale and they cause damage to buildings and they actually can cause people to become injured or to lose their life. So, earthquakes are a very very serious thing in some parts of the world and of great concern. Um luckily, as humans get smarter, we build buildings that are better at withstanding earthquakes. We build buildings that are safer during an earthquake. So, I think as time goes by, most of the world will become much safer but even still now, earthquakes are very devastating would be the best English word to use. So, we had the word earthy uh, come up in a question. When you say something is earthy, when you describe it as earthy, it has the colors of the earth like the colors of dirt, the colors like and or it smells a little bit like it, okay? So, there are um times when well, dirt itself smells earthy, okay? If you go outside right now and dig a hole with a shovel and smell the dirt, we would say it has an earthy smell. You can also describe a person as being very earthy. Um usually an earthy person uh dresses in clothes that are very simple and straightforward. They don't dress in a lot of bright colors um and uh you would say they are an earthy. I think the best example would be um back in the 70s, there were people in North America called hippies and they were very earthy people. I think that's probably the right way to describe them but more we would use it to describe uh colors or tones or smells. So, you could say um oh, I painted my uh my room I painted my office and I used a lot of earthy tones. I used a lot of earthy colors. So, those would be like colors in the far picture, kind of that subtle look. Hey, I'm gonna leave earthenware up here for a sec because we're gonna switch to members only chat for a sec. Let me get that set up for a minute and I'll go to my question form here and get the next question. Uh, this is a good question. So, two things are happening right now. I'm going to answer a few questions from the uh form but also anyone who has clicked the join button below and become a member of the channel, your name is in green during all live streams. You get a little crown by your name. You get an extra video on Wednesday and you can ask questions directly in the chat during members only chat time. Um let's see here. There are also down to the ground people. Um yeah, we would say down to earth definitely. We would say someone is down to earth. I'm not sure Al, we would say down to the ground. Eugene from Etobicoke says, I'm going to Toronto downtown, the Queens Park, City Hall, the Union Station to take some photos and 4K videos today after this lesson. We have clear blue sky there today. Let me look out the window. Looks very clear when I look towards Toronto. I am quite a ways from Toronto but If I drive to the lake, I can see the CN Tower. So, that's very cool. Mama, can we get the slide before the live lessons? Because I want to type some sentences on the slide. Thank you. Oh, so Mohammed, I have been sharing the slides in the description of the edited video but you're saying it would be nice to have these slides as I'm doing it. I will do that. Yes, sorry about that. I should have done that um earlier. I don't share a copy that you can edit but you can make a copy of my copy and then type on it. You probably know that but I know when I share the slides, sometimes people request permission to edit which I don't give but you can make a copy of my copy. So, Mohammed, I will do that going forward. That is a great suggestion. Uh and if you're not sure what Muhammad is saying, the slides over there If you watch the shorter edited version of this video from last of the lesson from last week, in the description, there's a link to the slides. Like you can look at the slides yourself and there's also a link to a Quizlet set to practice them. So, thanks, Mohammed. Lubos, could you please explain to me the difference between all over the world and in the world? Thank you. Nice. Have a nice afternoon from Europe. So, there are happy people all over the world. There are people in the world. There are happy people in the world. It's the same. The first is just a little bit more expressive and it emphasizes it more. Like if I wanted to say, oh, there's a lot of happy people in the world. 
that makes sense. That's a great sentence. But if I said, oh, there are happy people all over the world, it's I'm emphasizing it just a little bit more. Uh Julia, hi dear teacher. My question is if you find something expensive in your land, for example, oil or gas or gold, does it belong to you or the government? It belongs to us. I own what's called the mineral rights to my property. That means any natural resource found on my property, no matter how deep, belongs to me. So, that's kind of cool. Um Lolly, do you grow a vegetable garden on your land? No, we do not grow vegetables because at market, the people who sell vegetables who sell beside us, we trade flowers for vegetables. So, that works and fruit. Al Gore says down to earth. Eugene says the earth is our common home. We have to protect our living environment. I would agree. Uh everything we do affects everyone. So, Hey, Berkey, thanks so much for becoming a member. That's awesome and let's do science. Thank you for becoming a member as well. Um let's see here. Two soldiers from the construction battalion replaced the excavator. Russian proverb says Siaksa PB. I hope that's how you pronounce your name. Uh, yes, anything that can be done by a machine can be done by people. Um but uh I guess you're saying the soldiers from the construction battalion are very strong. They're so strong they can replace an excavator. Uh let's see here. Mode eggs. Why do you say earth's crust but earth day? Why is it about the possessive? Why isn't it the same as mother's day, woman's day? I don't know. Um let's see. Valentine's day, mother's day, father's day. Yep, it's just earth day. It's not the earth's day. It's the day we celebrate the earth. I don't know, mode. I'll have to look that one up. That's interesting. That's a good question. Maria C. Hi, Bob. How are you? I'm good. Do you consider yourself to be a down to earth person? Have a great day. Some days when I am well rested and when I am thinking clearly, I think I'm very down to earth but when I'm very nervous, I might seem a little more flighty. So, a down to earth person thinks clearly, makes good practical decisions. Um they say what they think um and that's usually what I'm like most of the time. But if I'm nervous, I'm a little bit more crazy. That was my nervous (laughs) action. Let's see. Al Gore says it's called the engineering core. Probably, yes. Um Lolly is welcoming Burke. Muhammad says, I see. Thank you, dear teacher. No problem, Muhammad. Key Park. I caught a big earthquake when I was a kid. My building was damaged but my family and I were not hurt. That was a nightmare. That would be scary. Um I've only felt very tiny earthquakes but a large one would really scare me. Uh Julia says it's awesome. Mode is welcoming people. Rod says, mister, I always try to be down to earth most of the time. Yep, pun intended. Stay safe you and everybody else. So, thanks Rod. I do. I get I get it. I get the pun. Very very good pun. Lolly says, merci Bob pour ta réponse. Pas de problème. Samuel Chen says, hi Bob. I'm late today. No problem, Samuel. When you talk about earth, a word comes to mind. Geoscience. So many subjects like geology, oceanography and meteorology. Great topic. Thanks, Samuel. Let me repeat those words for you. Geology, oceanography and meteorology. Study of the earth and rocks and how it's formed. Oceanography, study of the oceans and meteorology, study of weather. I hope I got that right. Uh Lolly says, welcome. Let's do science. We oui, faisons de la science. I don't know. I hope it's feminine. It's not du science. De la. I think so. Uh, let's see here. Um and you're welcoming the member called Let's Do Science. I'm just translating the name for fun. Uh let's see here. Brent says from American English with this guy. Do you have any pull with the Canadian government? Can you open the border? I need to take a trip up there. No, we are shut down. We are shut down now till June 2nd. They extended everything. I don't think that border is opening very soon. So, thank you so much for the super sticker. Um I'm not sure how to pronounce your name but thank you so much for the super sticker. That is awesome. Sometimes what I do is I will translate the name but uh I can't seem to copy and paste it. Oh, okay. Um Modags. Honestly, it's easier to pronounce without the S's. Yes, that's true. Earth Day. Could you imagine if it was called Earth's Day? That's mouthful. Gaston says, hi, teacher Bob. In your farm, 
on your farm actually. On your farm, do you rotate the flowers planted each season? Yes. We do not grow the same flowers in the same piece of dirt or land or ground every year. So, if we grow lilies in one spot one year, we grow them in a different spot the next year. If we grow sunflowers in one spot, we grow them in a different spot and we usually do it every three years. So, if the place where we had sunflowers last year, we will not have sunflowers in that soil this year or next year but then the year after, we will grow them there again. It's to prevent soil borne disease. Maria C. Thanks, Bob. No problem. Let's do science. Hi, Bob. What's the difference between soil and earth? I think soil and ground and dirt are just more common ways to talk about it. Um but definitely when you're talking about machines, they move earth. They're earth moving machines. They dig holes in the earth. Um then we would refer to we would use earth um earth. A grounded plane is one banned from flying. Very true, Al. Faisons de la science. La terre. This is me, Eugene from Etobicoke. Good to hear from you, Eugene. I think I recognize your name now, Eugene and then I didn't recognize it um, when you did the super sticker. So, I'm gonna have to look. I tried to memorize it once and I I just have to look at it a bit more. I think I can get it now. I think I will remember. Um American English with this guy. My son and I are taking a little trip for his birthday. Canada would be so easy. Looks like Pittsburgh instead. Yeah, you know, I don't wanna say anything negative about Pittsburgh but Canada does sound more fun. I'm sure Pittsburgh is a great city. Mode eggs. I have to say, who better to give a lesson about the earth and the salt of the earth himself? Mr. Bob. Thanks, Mr. Bob. No problem. Hey, uh, I'm going to just switch uh live. Sorry, I'm gonna switch members only chat off as I do that. There's one more statement from Brent. We have a man made desert in Maine because farmers didn't rotate their crops enough. Yeah, it's a little tricky. Um farming in the last 20 or 30 years, there's been a lot of positive changes to protect the soil because farmers in North America are farming the life out of their soil. So, we're doing a lot of things now to protect the soil. Um let's see. Soil is a fertile layer of earth. Yes, Al. Definitely. Fertile is a good way to put it. Full of nutrients. Um let's see here. Um let me just do Fiordo's question and we'll get back to the lesson. Hello, Bob. I would like to know whether or not in Canada, everything under your property right to the center of the earth is yours or only the surface. I think there is a limit, Fyodor, but my piece of land in Canada, if there was gold on my land, it's my gold. If we found oil on my land, I have the rights to the oil. That's how we say it. There is actually natural gas below my land, but it's very expensive to drill to get to it but I would own the rights to that natural gas. It belongs to me. So, yes, definitely. Hey, before we go back to the lesson though, I do want to mention uh thank you so much to all of you who are members. Thanks to those of you that just clicked that join button below to become members. That is awesome. Thank you so much for supporting me and everything that I do and thanks to all of you as well. I know many of you do other little things to support me. You give me thumbs up. Um some of you watch the ads before the videos. I appreciate that. You don't have to but I do appreciate it because it helps fund my channel. Um some of you uh share my videos. That's actually another good way to thank me. If you don't want to become a member but you want to support me, sharing my videos with other people helps me a lot as well. So, thank you for all of you that do that. But let's get back to the lesson. Um earthenware. So, when you make things out of clay primarily, usually the type of soil called clay, there are specific kinds of clay that are really good for making pots out of and we say they're they are earthenware pots. Basically, meaning that they're made out of earth. That someone went and they dug up some clay and they use that clay to make pots out of. So, here you see some earthenware. We have many earthenware pots around the farm. We also call them clay pots. It's a little easier to say clay pot um but definitely. Um I don't usually answer questions from the chat but I see the question. Hi, Bob. Do you have any dandelions in Canada? We have lots of dandelions in Russia especially so far. Yes, we do. 
a lot of in French, is it Don de Lyon or do you guys say Pisson Lee? I think one is a crude way of saying dandelion. I'm not sure, but anyways, I'm sure if you saw my field right now, you would laugh at the amount of dandelions. People who who are from the planet earth can be called earthlings, okay? You could say that we are citizens of the planet earth. You could say that we are from the planet earth. When you watch science fiction movies, people from earth are often called earthlings. So, this here is an earthling. Someone who is from the earth. Um so, definitely we have a name for ourselves. We are all earthlings. So, sometimes you'll see an alien in a science fiction movie say earthling take me to your leader or something like that. Uh Moise in the chat says, hi Bob, do you use fertilizer to grow flowers? Uh Moise, we use the manure from our sheep and goats. So, we compost our manure and we use that to fertilize our fields. Um and Lolly says, yes, Don de Lyon is pisson -Lis. Let's talk a little bit about continents. I should mention that I did do a lesson on the earth a two years ago and so, the next three slides I think are a bit of a repeat but the continents are the large land masses that we have divided the planet into and they are the uh parts of the earth like North America, South America. Last time I talked about continents, there was an argument about how many there are but my understanding is that there are seven but I think in some countries, you learn that there are six or eight. So, we should see in the chat in the comments below if people comment on that but my understanding is that we have uh the seven continents that you see there. They are the large land masses that make up the planet earth. We also have the northern hemisphere. The northern hemisphere is everything above the equator. The equator being the line, the imaginary line that divides the earth in half to north and south. So, we have the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. I'm sure you guessed that was coming next. So, I live in the northern hemisphere. Some of you live in the southern hemisphere. In the northern hemisphere right now, we're heading into summer. In the southern hemisphere, it's definitely getting colder. So funny, eh? It's getting warmer up here but it's getting colder down there. We also have like I mentioned the thin line that goes around the earth called the equator. We also have the tropic of Capricorn and the tropic of Cancer which are when the earth tilts, they're the lines that were this don't quote. This is not a science lesson. I'm not talking about the tropic of Cancer or the tropic of Capricorn but uh definitely the equator is the imaginary line that is the exact center um, between the north uh the northern and southern hemispheres. If you want a science lesson, I'm sure there's other YouTube channels that will teach you more about the equator and the tropic of Cancer and the tropic of Capricorn. Um at the very top of our planet, at the very top of the earth is the north pole. At the very bottom of the earth is the south pole. The south pole being in Antarctica uh and the north pole I think being just in the the middle of a huge ice flow although I should research that. Again, this is not a science lesson. It's just an English lesson. Um we also have this very curious invisible thing around the planet called the earth's magnetic field. The earth's magnetic field is what allows us to navigate using a compass. A compass always points to the north magnetic pole which is slightly off from the north pole but close enough that it allows you to find out where north is. So, a compass is a small round device with a magnetic needle in it and it will point to the magnetic north because the earth has a strong magnetic field. Um I don't think we fully understand the earth's magnetic field but it is very very important to many many things. Um the earth rotates. The earth rotates on its axis. Notice I changed the slide. So, the earth rotates at a certain speed. When the earth turns one full revolution, when the earth rotates one full revolution, we call it a day. So, the earth is spinning very, very quickly and it's spinning on its axis. 
it's rotating on its axis. Notice I'm using different words here that mean the same thing. And one full rotation of the earth equals one day. 24 hours. It's pretty cool. Um and yes, it spins on its axis. Now, interestingly enough, the axis is the center of the earth. The center of the earth from the north to the south. But the earth actually tilts on its axis back and forth. So, sometimes Canada is closer to the sun for a few months and that's when we have summer and our days are longer. And sometimes the earth is farther from the sun for a few months and that's when our days are shorter and we have winter. So, that is the the tilt of the earth. Um let me just check one thing here. Sorry for the little pause. So, earth has seasons because its axis is tilted. Earth's axis is always pointed in the same direction. So, different parts of the earth get the sun's direct rays throughout the year. For example, in summer, the sun's rays hit that region more directly than any other time of year. So, little explanation, mini science lesson about the axis. The earth orbits the sun. So, it takes us um approximately 365 days to to orbit the sun and we call this a year. So, the earth not only spins on its axis but the earth as well is orbiting the sun and one complete orbit gives us a year. And then we also have um when the sun comes up, we say it's the sunrise but if you are on the moon, you will see what's called earth rise. So, you will see the earth rise above the horizon. So, if I get up early enough, I can see the sunrise. So, when I get up, it's dark. I didn't get up that early this morning but if you get up early enough, you will see the sunrise. If you were on the moon and you got up early enough, you would see earth rise. Um you can see moon rise as well, I think but again, this isn't the science lesson. Anyways, hey, that was the lesson on earth. I know I talked a little bit about dirt and soil and I talked a little bit about the planet. It's because the word earth kind of has different meanings. If you do a a search for it online, um you will see this meaning of earth. It says meaning one, the planet on which the planet on which we live, the world. Meaning two, the substance of the land surface, soil. So, That's why there was kind of two elements to this lesson. Kind of uh kind of fun to look at both aspects. I am now going to answer questions until we are done. Uh let me see here. Uh I think I only have about seven or eight questions left and then we'll be finished. Let me get those questions on the screen. Daya says, hello, Bob. Would you like to travel to all the countries on earth? I would love to welcome you to my country, Nepal. Sorry to correct the prepositions there. But English is weird with prepositions, isn't it? It's always hard to know when to use which one. Um I will definitely travel sometime in the future. I'm not sure if I'll get to your country. If I do, um I think it would be fun to visit your country but we'll see. There's a big list of countries I need to visit um and uh I still haven't been to France yet. So, um let's see here. Slava says, Oh, yes. So, the Russian proverb, two soldiers from the construction battalion replace the excavator, Russian proverb. So, yeah, I I find that in my mind, I picture two gigantic Russian men with shovels and uh that they're just faster than an excavator. Um oh, I didn't mention this in the lesson. I should have. Giovanni, hey, Mr. Bob, I'd like to thank you. Your lessons have been very helpful mainly for my listening. Um by the way, for listening practice, This is these are good lessons to listen to. The lesson is available again in a couple of days in a slightly shorter format, usually 25 to 35 minutes. I remove all of the um viewer questions. So, if you do like to practice your English listening by listening to things twice, that's a great way to do that for sure. Um so, are there people in Canada who believe in flat earth theory in the flat earth theory. Oh, yeah, definitely. I think there's people all over the world. Um a minority, a small percentage of people do believe the earth is flat. I find it a little hard to believe when I see the cool pictures from space and when you understand physics and those kinds of things. Um it's just a lot more likely the (laughs) the world is not flat. 
Um, let's see here. Next question from Lubika. I just would like to say thanks for every lesson you have made for us. It's is hard to stop listening to your lessons. Well, I'm glad to hear that. By the way, these lessons, I do release them as a podcast as well if you wanna use that for your English listening practice. Um, I should mention though that it actually benefits me more if you watch my lessons on YouTube. I do put everything out as podcasts as well because I know that's convenient. Um, but if you want to be supportive of my channel, the more you watch my lessons on YouTube, the better it is for me in the long run. Let's see here. Um, Betty from Taiwan. What's up, Bob? Could you please do a pronunciation with earth in slow motion? Thank you as always. Fantastic work. So, do you want me to say the word earth really slowly? Earth. So, your tongue starts at the back. Er, like my tongue's pulled all the way back. Earth. And then it just comes forward right to my teeth. Earth. 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 On the planet earth. Like you can actually see my tongue when I'm talking, right? We live on the planet earth. There you go. That was the slowest I could do. Uh let's see here. Dana says, I need a group to improve my language. Can you help me? I wanna practice. That is one of the only things I don't do, Dana. I don't have a discord server, a discord channel. I don't really do one-on-one practice. I don't create groups for people to practice with each other. I'm kind of busy doing all of the other stuff but if you ask in the comments, if you say, hey, I'm looking for someone to chat with or a group of people, you might get a few responses from people and you can connect that way. Um just one second here. I just have to check one thing. I'm almost done, I think. Um next question from KT. Hi, teacher Bob. I just want to ask, is Antarctica considered a country or a continent? Thank you. It's a continent. Um it's a continent that's split up like a pie, I think, between a lot of different countries around the world. Um and then last question from Naomi. Does the verb ground have some different meanings? Thanks. Yeah. So, when you have electricity in your house, you have to ground things. So, our electrical outlets actually have there's two connectors but there's a third one called the ground because when you have electricity, things need to be grounded. If you say that a person is really well grounded, it means they were raised well and they're polite and they're hardworking. Like a good person is a well grounded person as opposed to someone who has eight different jobs in one year. A well grounded person would work at the same job and be reliable. Um when your kids are bad, you can say that they are grounded and that means they're not allowed to go out. So, when I was a kid once, I disobeyed my parents and I was grounded for six weeks. I wasn't allowed to go anywhere for six weeks as a teenager. Um let's see here. Um when you grind something, the past tense of to grind is ground. So, you can have like yesterday, I ground the pepper or I ground the salt. That's kind of hard to say, isn't it? So, yes, there's a lot of different ways to use uh the verb or the word ground as um as a noun, as a verb, et cetera, et cetera. Hey, that was a lesson about the earth. It was a lesson about earth. Uh hopefully, the mix of the two was good for you and you learned a few new things. It was a lot of fun for me. Uh I think we're done three minutes early. Uh At school, students are always happy when I'm done early. So, hopefully, you guys are as well. Thank you so much for hanging around and learning a little bit. Remember, this lesson will get um edited down to about 30 minutes long and it'll come out in a couple of days if you do want to listen to it again. And then, I know there was a request that um I include the slides in the link when I'm doing the lesson as well. I'll make sure I do that starting next week. But when you see this published later in a day or two, Um it will have a link to all the slides as well. Thanks to Rod, the Brazilian English teacher and Brent, the American English teacher, American English with this guy for hanging out in the chat. Always good to see a couple English teachers here along with everyone else. Thanks to Todd and Dave for moderating and making things uh just pleasant for everybody. Um I know that uh 
Yeah, Todd and Dave are both university students. So I know they, they're one of them. I think Todd is actually in class for the second half of my live streams now. He's doing double duty. So hopefully that doesn't cause any trouble with his learning. But uh, thanks for doing that, uh, both of you guys. Uh, and then thanks to Eugene. I'm looking forward to seeing that uh, video footage, Eugene. That'd be cool. Uh, I'll just say bye. Bye to Mode Eggs. Bye to Maria C. Bye to Mr. Z. Bye to Lolly Lolly and Tony. Bye to Mohammed Mohammed Khan. Bye to Julia Olise. Bye to Al Gore. Let me scroll back. Brent and Rod, I mentioned already. Bye to Norma. Uh, bye to everybody. Bye everybody. Let me scroll to the bottom. I feel like when I have extra time, I can say bye to more people but I should just stop talking. So, um, bye everyone. Have a great weekend. Have a great day. Uh, tomorrow, live stream, hopefully outside. Cross your fingers. Uh, live question and answer lesson at 11 a.m. 